Can you name a film director? Steven Spielberg. Who? Ron Howard. Who? Steven Spielberg. Um, Quentin Tarantino and Roman Polanski. Famous film director. Well, I know Bollywood. Uh, any of them. Uh, Sanjay Leela Bansali. Name a female director. Female director. Queen Latifah. Uh, oh, um, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> female director. No, I don't know. No. Black male director. Noel Clark. Um. That's a tricky one. Nothing really comes to to my mind. No, I'll have to pass on this one. <laughs> Black film director. Well, actually, I, I do like some of them, and I I don't know how what is their name. One of the uh, Samuel Jackson. He's okay. an actor. Yeah. He's an actor, I think. Can you name a black female director? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> black female film director. I don't know, sir. The faces that you are seeing have all made a significant contribution to the film industry. But could you honestly say that you would recognize any of these people, apart from the obvious, if you walk past them in the street? The fact is, there are a lot of black film practitioners, more male than female for now. And you've probably watched at least half of these people's productions, possibly without knowing. So the question is, is the game changing? I've spoken with some industry practitioners to get their opinion on whether the representation has changed, evolved or progressed in the last 25 years of black film. I don't know, black film maybe is a uh, black cast and, you know, a subject that is just about sort of black life and culture um, and probably made by a black filmmaker, maybe low budget, that, that sort of thing, really. For instance, I love The Colour Purple, awesome film. Uh, I think arguably the best portrayal of a character by Oprah Winfrey of all time, awesome. But I believe it was directed by, by Steven Spielberg. Uh, the original author is a black lady, I believe. But um, if you've got the skills, you've got the skills, you know. There's this massive debate about Black Panther, you know. Half of the people arguing say, it's a black film, it's great. And then the other half are like, it ain't owned, it's not owned by black people, man. Oh my God, the money's gonna go to all these white folks. Ugh. And, you know, I like to do my research to actual, like, core producers of black dude. It, like, he just happens to work for Marvel. So you can argue as much as you want to argue. First of all, so what defines a black film for me yeah. is um, probably the point that I just sort of touched on saying, um, knowing that it was either directed by a, a black director or, um, it, you know, predominantly consists, a film or, you know, a series predominantly um, consists of black actors, actresses. Um, so that's what I would define as a black film. In a joint research study, the BFI and Blackstar compiled some stats over a 10-year period in the UK film industry, and the numbers make for some interesting reading. The White Bubbles are films without black actors in them and their research sample comes from 
1,172 UK films. Uh, the person that um, I was most impressed by sort of years ago was, the, was Spike Lee and his career and how he was able to make films that... Uh, make films that he wanted to make, make films about kind of black culture that spoke to me and weren't, weren't apologetic about kind of coming from a black point of view. Well, whether we like it or not, Spike Lee is going to ever go down in history as someone to kick off the doors, clean off his hinges. Um, in the 80s and in the 90s, I believe he um, used to max out his credit cards to make short films and little feature films. And um, he's, um, he, he may be one of the earliest um, black filmmakers I'm aware of who set up his own production company, made enough noise to put himself in a position where major labels wanted to collaborate with him. So Spike Lee is absolutely a pioneer um, in, the, in the realms of film and TV. I would say um, Jada Pinkett, simply because um, I can relate to her, I can relate to her behind the camera and in front of the camera. Um, behind the scenes, she obviously, as we know, she's a, you know, she's a mother, she's a professional, um, she's in touch with her spirituality. Um, and then obviously in camera or in front of camera, she, um, you know, she, she's just accomplished so much over the years. It, it is evolving and there are more kind of black f filmmakers, um, black female filmmakers as well, kind of coming forward and, and making films. And so there's, there's more people making first and sometimes second features. I mean, that's generally kind of the States. Um, and here, there's, there's a few that have done um, done a few films. And you know, Steve McQueen, of course, has gone on and had great sort of international success. Um, and he came from an arts background. So, so you know, there are kind of green shoots and things are beginning to look better than they did, I think. Um, regarding to the growth of practitioners in front and behind the camera and involved in the, in the black film scene, uh, again, I think that the growth is... I mean, I've, I'm not saying I've been involved from the beginning, I haven't, but I really have been involved for over 20 years. So I've seen the growth. There's definitely more teachers, more writers, more producers, more actors, more actresses, more editors in the realms of film and TV. That goes without saying. However, if you look at the credits of any film, you know, there's at least 50 roles. So where are the sparks? Where are the drivers, where are the special effects people then? Where's the accountants? Where's the legal team? You know, where's the costume designers? Where's the set designers? We need people of varied backgrounds, not even just black. You know, I want to see some Filipinos, I want to see some Asians, I want to see some Chinese folks up in that mix. So the core cool question being, how do I feel, you know, the presence is felt in the realms of film? It's getting better. We just need to understand, in fact, understand that there's more than just directing and producing it. Um, it'll be nice to see more black faces on camera. Um, it'll be nice to see a lot more because I think there's still this sort of, you know, doorway or barrier, should I say, where, you know, you get in a few people coming through in slow, you know, slowly. But having said that, um, we've still got the people from... I don't know, years, 10 years, 15 years ago that we still see in front of the camera. Um, but it'd be nice to see some new, fresh talent coming through as well. So, yeah, I think there's some work that still needs to be done there. I mean, I think the problem with 
black film is at the moment people are making films and you get something made, but then there's a problem with distribution and, and still there's still the problem there that people are not open-minded. They don't think things are going to sell, so they don't put the financing in, they don't market it as well as other films. So then it's that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that they don't do well, but because they haven't given them space to do well. So, because um, I just came from a talk earlier with... Um, Dee Rees, who did Mudbound, and she was talking about, you know, her film and the fact that no studio picked that up to distribute. So it wasn't, it didn't get to cinema screens. And it was only when it showed in Sundance that Netflix picked it up and bought it. And so then it's got an audience that way. But otherwise there wasn't, people didn't come to that film despite the cast. You know, it's got Kerry Mulligan, it's got um, Mary J. Blige. It's, you know, it's like, why? If if somebody else made that film, I think it would have been it would have been picked up. I think any business needs an infrastructure to be successful and to have longevity. Unfortunately, if you look at all the biggest biggest establishments that can be the foundation of this, i.e. the BBCs, the Channel Fours, you know, this is where these are the the, the playing fields that can nurture and grow creative from all of these different backgrounds, right? Um, I'm never going to get into the whole, these companies are institutionally racism, racist and so on and so forth. That, that whole debate is just dead, isn't it? At the end of the day, the powers that be at all these channels, if they wanted more content of a diverse nature, they'd have them. They don't. It's really that simple. The infrastructure should, yeah. yeah, I think most definitely there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think, you know, if as a community, as, you know, Obviously, I'm black myself, so I feel I feel as you know the black community coming together, there'll be more sort of opportunity for people to support that. Um, so yes, the infrastructure needs a lot of work, um, but I do feel we we could kind of um, meet that need really. Yeah. Yeah, I think if something's called black film, then it it feels like. I don't know, maybe there's an agenda or it's going to be sort of banging you over the head about something. And I think films are films. They come from all different sort of backgrounds, all different sorts of people can make films. And so I, th I think inclusion is good to be part of the wider filmmaking world. Um, and yeah, I think it would be strange if I made a film and people just said, oh, it's a black film. I'd feel like OK, so nobody else is going to come and see this. Um, that would be a shame, I think. I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to business, people like to own stuff, right? And as a whole, black people don't tend to own much. I think Kevin Hart owns his company, he owns his films. He's certainly getting himself in that position. Likewise with Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry right? He's got Tyler Perry Studios, so he can write, make, and own his content and sell it and so on and so forth. In the UK, I probably couldn't name many people. I mean, I own my company, but I'm not a big, giant company. So when it comes to ownership, people like to to label it and box it and sell it off. I'm a filmmaker. I, don't, I never walk into a room and say, I'm a black filmmaker. Firstly, I'm clearly black, innit? You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, it can work for people of colour because there's certain places you go, certain organisations that will give you money if you have a black director or black cast. So, you know, you play the game, you want to play the game. You know what I mean? The, the stripping it bare, stripping it raw, it's very simple. I'm a, I'm a black guy. Um, so if I'm going to write a story, or if there's a story that I want to make or be involved in, it's going to likely, it's going to likely to be, I'm likely to be more interested if it's something that reflects my background, my culture. So I'm never purposely trying to write a story about a black man, a black woman, and I'll plight. I'm just, you know, I want to see my stories. I'm 44. I've seen an awful lot of content, which is here as a white dude. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I, I'd like to see some varied stories. Mm, I think it's a strong phrase to use, um, but straight off the back of that, if you said that, everybody would know specifically what you're talking about. It's either a black directed film or a film with black actors. So I don't know, I think there's a, I think you can use the term, but, but yeah, it does have a strong sort of, 
It is a, it is a catchy phrase, isn't it? So the representation has changed, but not enough. The black film industry has progressed, but at a slow rate, which means it is evolving. It just needs nurturing. Intention. If you look at your companies and half of your staff are not female and a decent percentage of them are not people of color, then you are part of the problem. Because you need people working for you and you need people in positions of leadership who can exercise their bias, who can exercise their perspective. That is the only way this thing is going to change. The odd token thrown, the odd bone given is not going to do it. Don't pat yourself on the back because you made that black drama. <laughs> Bully for you. <laughs> That's not diversity, my friends. It's got to be baked into the foundation of where the ideas flow from. The reason why Queen of Cartway exists is because of an executive at Disney called Tendo Nagenda, who is of Ugandan parentage and walked this story up and down the halls of Disney for years before it got made. Queen of Cartway would not exist without him having a power position in that company. The version of Selma that you see when you watch that film would not exist without Oprah Winfrey being one of the producers on that movie. Trust me, I know I was there. 